There's been a change to the agenda. Our second speech is going to be an impromptu speech. What's the timing requirements of the speech? All right. I think the impromptu speech is uh, three to five. Three to five minutes. I think it's three to five. Mr. Timer, three to five minutes. Okay. Because it's so impromptu, I don't have an appropriate introduction for such a versed and experienced speaker. I can only say, prepare to be dazzled. <laughs> prepare yourselves to be entertained. Prepare yourselves for Lorraine Campbell. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. One of the things that I do on the side is I also teach the youth leadership program for Toastmaster. I teach it here in Coral Springs. I teach it at Piper High School, and I also teach it for two groups at South Plantation High School. Teaching youth is a very interesting I don't want to say dilemma, but just an interesting experience. Because when you give them the opportunity and you make them feel safe in their space, and as I tell them, I don't care what you want to talk about. I don't give you a topic. Your topic can be whatever you choose it to be. You have to be respectful. And you have to be tactful. You would be shocked, amazed, bewildered when you give them the space One girl got up and said, I'll call her Crystal. She said, Miss Campbell, Miss Campbell, let me tell you about the time I got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She said, actually, it was the third time I got arrested. I said, the third time? What was so interesting about the third time you got arrested? She said, I was just standing there. And the judge said, Miss Crystal, this is the third time I have seen you. Do you know, in two weeks you will be 18 years old, and you will not be in the juvenile system anymore. I will keep you for the next three years. And she said, what's that word you're always talking about? I said, epiphany? She goes, I had one of those. <laughs> And she said, the epiphany was, Juvie Hall is hard. I can't imagine anything harder than Juvie. She goes, I went from a 1.5 student, I am a 2.9 student, and I'm going in the Navy. I said, wow. She's going in the Navy. We all play a part. These people are tomorrow's future. Another student had a poster board and said, I'm working on my project. I said, really, what is your project? It was Black History Month. I said, why don't you do your project for us as a speech? She was a little shy. I said, you already did the research, so you already know what you're going to talk about. She says, OK, but you won't know this person. Hit me. She said, it's a guy called Dr. Ricky Kittles. I said, you're kidding me. She said, I know Ricky Kittles. He's the leading geneticist in the country, or actually around the world. I said, when I was in high school, middle school, and elementary, my name is Campbell. Ricky Kittles sat two seats behind me. He was a little kid about that big, never bothered anyone. If I knew what I know now, I would have been a better friend to him. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that we don't know when we see these kids who sits or stands in front of us or what we have the ability to do. When you see a kid, ask them, what you doing? Why aren't you in school? What's your plan? What's your goal?